this video we're going to talk about heat capacity and specific heat capacity. So these are chapter 11 in your book and that starts on page 103. So the last chapter was a really short chapter and it kind of just dealt with uh, converting between degrees Celsius and Kelvin and also thermometric properties. So make sure you learn the definitions from the last chapter and when we do past exam questions on that chapter you'll start to see the type of questions they ask. So let's deal with heat capacity first because heat capacity and specific heat capacity are very similar with one key difference. So imagine I had a lump of copper and another lump of zinc and I wanted to heat both of those up by one Kelvin. So I wanted to increase their temperature by one Kelvin. Now remember increasing their temperature by one Kelvin is the same as increasing their temperature by one degree Celsius. It's the same thing. So to do that, I'd obviously have to heat them up so I could use a Bunsen burner or a hot plate or something like that. <clears throat> well, would they heat up by one Kelvin in exactly the same amount of time? Would it take the same amount of time for the copper uh, piece to increase its temperature by one as it would the zinc? What might affect how long it takes for them to heat up by one Kelvin? Well, lots of different things might affect it. One might be the mass. Let's say you have a five kg lump of copper whereas you've only a 1 kg lump of zinc. Obviously, because there's more copper to heat up, you'd assume that it would take longer to heat up 5 kg than it would 1 kg. Another thing that would affect how long it takes to heat up is the actual material itself. Does copper heat up easier or more difficult or harder than zinc? Um, so what are the properties of the substance? Like we know about conductors and insulators, is, are some things better conductors than others? Now that property is known as the heat capacity. And you're going to need to know the definition for heat capacity, but heat capacity has the symbol of capital C, and the capital C is very important, not a small c. And the heat capacity of an object right, of an object is the heat required to change its temperature by one Kelvin. Its unit is joules per Kelvin. So just to explain what that means, let's say copper had a heat capacity of 10 joules per Kelvin. What that means is in order to heat it up by one Kelvin, it needs to absorb or be given 10 joules of energy. Let's say, for example, zinc had a heat capacity of 25 joules per Kelvin. Well, that means to heat it, it up by one Kelvin, it needs 25 joules. So you need more energy to heat up zinc than you do to heat up copper or to heat up this piece of zinc than you do to heat up, heat up this piece of copper. Now, what this doesn't take into account is, or, what, or another thing about heat capacity actually is that it's the heat required to change the temperature. So actually it works the other way as well. Let's say I had a piece of zinc with a heat capacity of 25 joules per Kelvin. And let's say it wasn't heating up by one Kelvin. Let's say it was cooling down by three Kelvin. Well, in order to cool down by three Kelvin, it would need to lose a certain amount of energy. Because when things cool down, they lose heat energy to the surroundings. So how much energy would it need to lose? Well, for every Kelvin it is, wants to increase in temperature, it needs to absorb 25 joules. But it also works the other way. For every Kelvin decrease in its temperature, it needs to lose 25 joules. So if it lost 25 joules of energy, its temperature would decrease by 1. So if it's to drop by 3 Kelvin, it would need to lose 25 joules three times, so it would need to lose 75 joules of energy in total. And that's why in the definition it says to change its temperature, because it's not just about heating it up, it can also be how much energy it loses when it cools down. Now one thing our definition didn't really take, our heat capacity doesn't take into account is the mass. And we've already mentioned that the mass of a substance will affect how long it takes to heat up. That's where specific heat capacity comes in. Specific heat capacity is 
what, how much energy is needed for one kg of the substance for a specific amount of the substance and that specific amount is one kg so the definition of specific heat capacity is the specific heat capacity and specific heat capacity has the symbol small c of a substance is the amount of heat energy required to change one kilogram of the substance by one Kelvin. And it's really important that you learn this definition, it's a common one, as well as the heat capacity. And what's really important is the one kilogram of the substance by one Kelvin. So the unit of specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram Kelvin. So uh, on page 104 of your textbook, there's various different specific heat capacities. For example, gold, and remember small symbol is the C. So let's say small, or small C, specific heat capacity of gold is 130 joules per kilogram Kelvin. What that means is one kg of gold, exactly one kg, needs 130 joules of heat energy in order for its temperature to increase by one Kelvin. You compare that to other substances on the page, like for example copper. Copper has a specific heat capacity of 448 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So copper needs a lot more energy to heat up. It needs 448 joules for every kilogram uh, in order to heat up by one Kelvin. One uh, specific heat capacity that you're going to use a lot is the specific heat capacity of water. And that's around 4,200 or 4,190 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So water actually needs an awful lot of energy to heat up. And that's why things like boiling your kettle at home or electric showers, uh, they actually use an awful lot of electricity, an awful lot of electric electrical energy, because you need a huge amount of energy to heat up one kilogram of water by one Kelvin. And remember, just like before, this works the other way. We could have one kilogram of gold. And if that gold was cooling down, in order to, for its temperature to decrease by one Kelvin, it would have to lose 130 joules of energy. And that's why in the definition, it doesn't just say to the amount of energy required to heat something up. It says the amount of uh, heat energy required to change to change one kg of the substance by one Kelvin. So it's not necessarily just heating it up, it could be heating it up or cooling it down. Last thing very quickly, the definition or the equation for specific heat capacity is Q equals MC delta theta. Now Q stands for heat energy. You can use E as well, but generally for heat energy they use Q. M stands for the mass of the subject. C is specific heat capacity, which we just talked about. And delta theta, that's a triangle. That stands for change in temperature. So they might say to you, well, how much energy is required to heat up five kilograms of gold by 10 degrees Celsius. Well, the amount of energy required would be its mass, which is 5, times its specific heat capacity C, which we said was 130, times the change in temperature. Well, if we're heating it up by 10, that's going to be 10. So whatever that is, 5, 6, 650, I think it's 6,500 joules, 6,500 joules of energy. So that's just an example of where you use that um, equation. If we're dealing with heat capacity, the equation is just Q equals M delta theta. Sorry, C delta theta. You don't have um, capital C as well because of specific heat capacity. We don't have mass in this equation. So I'm going to ask you to read a couple of pages from your book which explains this again. But hopefully you've got the general idea from this.
and there's a little note on the side of your book about storage heaters and how storage heaters work. So I'd like, I'd like you to take a look at that as well.